Hello everyone. Today I'm going to explain you Azure Availability Set. So when you are creating a VM, you are filling up all the details, you will be selecting availability options. So if you are selecting no infrastructure, that would mean you are going to have only one single VM. Then under availability options, you have availability zone. Uh, I have explained this in my previous video. I'll mention the link in the description section below. And also in the top left corner of this video, you will find the link. Then we can choose virtual machine scale set. This I am going to explain in the next video. Then we have availability set. In this video, we are going to understand availability set. So let's choose availability set. Now under that, there is another option to configure availability set. So we click on create new and we type in the name and then we need to choose the number of fault domains and update domains. So let's understand what is fault domains and update domains. So consider I want to set up one single VN and I have one server rack. So what do I do? I create my VM in the only rack I have available. And this server rack has its own power supply and its own networking. So what happens in case the power supply goes bad or there is some issue with my networking switch? Will my virtual machine function? Nope. This is going to stop working. So how do I how do I protect this? How do I save myself from this? Can I offer high availability to my virtual machine? Yes, one of the option would be I set up another server rack. So server rack in case of availability sets, we can call it as fault domain. So I can have two server racks. So each server rack has its own power supply and own networking. So if in case one server rack is down, my virtual machine will continue to work fine from the other rack. So now let's go to the definition of fault domain as per the Microsoft document. So the link to the Microsoft document, I'm going to put it in the description section below. So fault domain define the group of virtual machine that share a common power source and network switch. So these are the two key points. By default, the virtual machine configured within your availability set are separated across up to three fault domains. So we have already discussed this part. So if this is understood. So with fault domains, we are protected with the hardware failure. What in case there is a software issue? What in case there is a software update going on? Are we protected? So let's read the definition of update domain. Update domains indicate group of virtual machines and underlying physical hardware that can be rebooted at the same time. One update domain is rebooted at a time. A rebooted update domain is given 30 minutes to recover before maintenance is initiated on different update domain. Each availability set can be configured up to 20 update domains. So let's go to the next slide. We have a diagram. The diagram can explain us this topic better. So in this diagram, we have three server racks. I have marked them as fault domain 1, fault domain 2 and fault domain Okay, fault domain 0, fault domain 1 and fault domain 2. Then to safeguard ourselves from the updates, update domains are spread across the fault domain. So if you can see this, I have update domain 1 here, then as well as I have update domain 1 here and also here. And same way update domain 2, update domain 2 and update domain 2. So update domain 1, 2, 3. 4, 5 and after 5 it has gone back to update domain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 then again 1, 2 and the cycle goes on. So let's say if Microsoft is performing update on update domain 1, we still have other instances running on other server racks. So our application continues to work fine. Worst case scenario, one of my server rack is down. 
and also at the same time Microsoft is performing updates on let's say update domain 1 so all these machines are gone and update domain 1 on this rack and this rack is gone but still my application continues to work fine so in this case I am protected with any hardware failure I am also protected when he, with any sort of updates or operating system issues now let's consider few scenarios of availability sets can I have only can I have only one fault domain and one update domain yes we can but this does not serve any purpose is as good as having single VM so not advisable second scenario can I have fault domain single fault domain and two update domains when I try to do this it gives an error the update domain count must be one when fault domain count is one so when you create the first instance it goes on fault domain one update domain one when you try to create the second instance it looks for the next fault domain and since we don't have it that might error out so that's why when we are configuring with one and two configuration it errors out here itself it does not allow us to configure third scenario can I have two fault domains and one update domain yes that's possible in this case both my fault domains will have update domain 1 and update domain 1 so what is the maximum what is the maximum allowed so maximum fault domains allowed is 3 and the maximum update domain allowed is 20 so now let's understand how are my VMs distributed across fault domains and update domains so this example I have two fault domains that is FD0 and FD1 and I have three update domains that is UD1, UD2 and UD3 so when I create my first VM it goes to FD0 and UD1 my second VM goes to FD1 this is incremented by 1 and this is also incremented by 1 UD2 my third VM again since we have only two fault domains it goes back to 0 and update domain goes to 3 my fourth VM from 0 it's incremented to 1 and update domain since this was total of 3 it goes back to 1 so this way the series continues so this is in case of two fault domains and three update domains okay now this is a screenshot from my Azure portal in this example I have two fault domains and two update domains so my first VM is on FD0 UD0 my second VM is on FD1 UD1 my third VM is on FD0 UD0 this is already done so it goes to 1 my fourth VM goes on FD1 and UD0 so this was my today's topic hope I was able to explain the topic of availability sets if you found this video useful please like and subscribe to my channel for more such videos if you have any questions or suggestions please leave it in the comment sections below thank you so much for watching